soirée alignement des deux équipes pour se leur couleur de Scorpion. By 1995, the Quebec Nordiques couldn't have been doing any better. They finished first in the Eastern Conference after years of being in the basement. They had a solid future and they were facing the defending champs, the New York Rangers, in a series that they could easily win. Led by Captain Joe Sakic, the fresh from Toronto, Wendell Clark, and rookie sensation Peter Forsberg. On ice, nothing could go wrong. Off the ice was another story. And for Winnipeg fans, but another small market, Quebec City. It's a battle that the Nordiques would lose and the city of Denver would ultimately win. But things could have gone a much different way. A more extreme way. Every year we got better and better, and, and here we are today. So I guess all those years of being bad uh, paid off. The Nordiques had spent the last five years being awful. In the last seven seasons, the team only managed to make the playoffs once. They constantly find themselves picking first overall again and again and again. Sometimes with backfiring consequences. He says he won't play for the Quebec Nordique. Fans were getting tired rooting for a losing team. So it was a very welcome surprise when the Nordiques went on their 1995 cup run. Adam, hit the far D, hit the far D for crying out loud. But while things were taking shape on the ice, off the ice, money issues and the falling Canadian dollar would plague the team. There was also the ongoing referendum on whether Quebec would secede from Canada. A petition would be signed by desperate Nordiques fans in order to keep their team in Quebec. But slowly, things began to unravel. Final road trip today for the Quebec Nordiques. They're off to the U.S. and they will not be coming back. I regret to announce that the owners have at that last resigned themselves to accepting the purchase offer for Comsat Video Enterprise of Denver, Colorado. We won't have anything in Quebec. It'll be like a little, little, little city. Quebec sans Nordiques, c'est ça manque quelque chose. Quebec without the Nordiques, he says, it's missing something. With the Nordiques headed to Denver, they needed a new identity. In fact, the Nordiques had their own new identity planned for the 1996-97 season, announced shortly before the move, which would have featured a more 90s teal and navy blue. Ultimately, with the team moving, these would be scrapped. Denver had had an NHL team before in the Colorado Rockies, but a certain MLB team had prevented them from using that name again. So, they had to get creative. They had to get extreme. Wrote it, dove it, flew it, crashed it. The ownership wanted something that would market to not only fans in Colorado, but fans all over the Rocky Mountain area. So ownership and graphic designer Michael Beindorf came up with something that captured their idea as much as they could. This was also the 1990s when teams and sports were getting more experimental with logos, with jerseys, and pretty much everything else. Let's go! Let's go! Ownership decided to follow their gut and call the team the Rocky Mountain Extreme. Beindorf would create a set of logos and the team would prepare to announce their new name that summer. But of course, that's not what happened. 
Denver Papers, the Denver Post, and the Rocky Mountain News had a fierce rivalry. When a source from the team reached out to eventual longtime Avalanche beat reporter Adrian Dater, he would fail to hesitate and would publish the story. Of course, fans were less than pleased with the idea. A show on KOA Radio hosted by former NFL linebacker Dave Logan would field call after call from fans complaining about the name. This was enough for ownership to take notice and to name the team contest was quickly put together. And it was with this contest that fans chose the Cougars. Only for ownership to change their minds once again and go with one of the runner-ups. Beindorf would be sent back to work, where under the guidance of creative director Dan Price, they would come up with the iconic Avs logo. And on August 10th, 1995, the Colorado Avalanche were finally unveiled. In the span of a few months, the team had finally come up with a name that everybody was pleased with. Well, not everybody. But in doing so, Beindorf and Price had created something iconic. And for an NHL-starved market, we to find a team that was ready to take another leap. Real sport has come to Colorado. Thank God for hockey. Time is hockey. Up. Hockey is life. Love the game. I, I can't, I'm lost for words here, but I, I'm ready. I'm ready. Baseball doesn't exist anymore. I'm a season ticket holder for the Avalanche, so tonight being the first game since 82 for Colorado, I'm uh, pretty excited to be here. The newly named Avalanche would pick up several key acquisitions. And after establishing a certain rivalry, would finally get to do what they couldn't in Quebec. While Denver would see their team's first season end the best way possible, for Quebec, they would watch their team win it a year after moving. We miss the Nordiques a lot, this woman says, and now the Stanley Cup, that really hurts. Aside from a few short-lived minor league teams, the Junior Quebec Remparts would be the only mainstay team. Despite the building of a new state-of-the-art arena some years ago, the city continues to wait for an NHL team this day. Aside from a few minor changes, the Avalanche look would remain unchanged until 2007. When Adidas took over as jersey supplier for the NHL in 2017, the Avs were more than happy to bring their old design back. The extreme came at a bizarre time for sports branding. These designs were targeted at younger and newer fans. But as the fans these designs were meant for got older and nostalgic, Sports leagues have seen a renaissance in these jerseys. And whether or not the extreme would have been embraced in a time like today, the name they picked ended up being a no-brainer. And that's the terrifying tale of how the Quebec Nordiques became the Colorado Avalanche. Let's go!